Previously on the Harry Strange Radio Drama. My mommy and daddy sent you to save me. No! No! What have you done? I gripped Elizabeth with both hands and pulled her slowly to the catwalk. How can you live with yourself? How can I live knowing you sacrificed a child for me? I didn't. She wasn't a child. What? Of course she... No! There's no way any Hyde would know that I was here for her. And she certainly wouldn't know my name. I... I... You need to trust that I know what I'm doing. I've been at this game longer than you've been alive. Harry, I'm sorry. I appreciate you saving my life. Save it. When this is over, we're through. You're going back to London or Cardiff or wherever the hell you're from. But I saved you, Raish Institute. Send me the bill, toots. We're finished when I get the little girl. Happening now on the Harry Strange radio drama. I think it came from over there. Go. I'll catch up. I'm not leaving you behind. The stairwells and hallways in this place keep changing. I'll never find you. This place is like a demented house at Hogwarts. Aren't you a little bit old for Harry Potter references? It's better than the moldy chestnuts you keep spouting. Tricorders indeed. By the way, Harry Potter is also English. Ow! Definitely that way. In here! What were you trying to do, Kelsey? I swear, Danny, I didn't do anything. Then how did I get this bite mark? I don't know. I swear to God, I didn't do it. Well, Danny didn't bite me, and I certainly didn't bite myself. I am sorry, Kells. Jacob is right. It had to be you. What are you going to do with that fire axe? Danny, honey, please, don't do this. Wait, man, maybe it wasn't her. Oh, really? Then who? The spiders? Dude, that's a chunk of flesh out of your shoulder. You said you saw her. No, I said I saw someone bite me. The flashlight was out. See, that's what I'm telling you. It's this place. It's making us all crazy. I didn't do anything. Come on, Danny, look at me. If I bit him, wouldn't I have blood all over? She has a point. Shut up. Shut up! Both of you! You were bitten, dude. And she's the only one who could have done it. I can't take any chances. Shh! magic and magical people. The unnatural order is all around us. There are white witches, black witches, demons, vamps, werewolves, shapeshifters, ghosts. It's a protoplasmic party of creature features out there. But unless you know where to look, you won't find them. I know where to look. My name is Harry Strange. Elizabeth and I stepped into the room just as Danny swung the axe at Kelsey's head. Lucky for Kelsey, she ducked at the last second and threw herself into Danny, both of them tumbling to the ground. Danny, Kelsey, and Jacob raced for the axe. We all froze. Elizabeth leveled her weapon at Danny. I don't think so, mate. I'll take that axe. The other boy started to move. I wouldn't do that, kid. She's a little crankier than usual today. Are you okay, dear? Uh Uh-huh. Who are you? I'm Harry Strange. The English marksman is Elizabeth Shaw. What are you doing here? We were just looking around. The halls and stairs changed. Sometimes while we were still walking on them. We got lost. And then what? You two big strong boys decided to rough up the little girl. Very macho. She bit Jacob. No, I didn't. Come here, Jacob. Let me see it. Not you, tough guy. Just him. It's about the right size. Maybe she did. I didn't. She doesn't have any blood on her. Quite a few scratches. She could have gotten those tussling about with Danny. Wait. This one is nasty. When did you get that one? I don't know. It's pretty deep. Maybe in my sleep? Interesting thing about her scratches and his bite. What's that? The one wielding the axe is the only one without any wounds. Care to explain that, Daniel? How should I know? And look, no one calls me Daniel except my father. And I don't see him here. Save the tough talk, Daniel. You may think you're invincible, but I actually am. I just want to get out of here. Can you take us back? Let me see your arm, Kelsey. Okay. Hmm. What the hell, dude? You cut me! Hey, you can't do that, man! 
What's wrong with your partner? Is he some kind of sicko? Relax. You were trying to use her for batting practice a few minutes ago. It's good. She bleeds red. What the hell other color would she bleed? Some demons bleed black, others green. It's hard to say, really. There are certain creatures who can turn a human's blood into a purple-yellow color. She's red. Not a foolproof test, but a pretty good guideline. Did you say demons? Yes. Okay, well, I'm off to find a little girl who was kidnapped. Have a nice day. Wait! I want to go home. Well, good luck with that. You can't just leave us here. You could come along with us. Uh, Elizabeth, may I speak with you for a moment? No need. Kelsey, if you think you will be safer with Danny and Jacob, then by all means go with them. They may get you out of here safely and without further incident. Oh, um, good point. Yeah, I'll stay with you. Kels, I I didn't try to take you out with the axe. That was Danny, remember? You didn't do much to try and stop him. I'll take my chances with Mr. Strange and Elizabeth. See, here's the thing. I'm going to find little Annie Hyde. That's what I told her parents I would do, and I'm a man of my word. That means I'll probably end up going deep into the bowels of this snake pit. If you stay with me, that's where you'll go as well. I'd rather go into the basement of this place with you, Mr. Strange, than trust Danny or Jacob. If Kels is going with you, so am I. <sighs> Screw it. Me too. Well, Harry, it looks like you have your fellowship. That's just dandy. One thing I forgot to mention, I don't care about any of you. I'll gladly sacrifice you, you, or you for Annie. Is he always this charming? This is one of his better days. <gasps> oh my... Lilith, that was incredible. What is happening? I'm chained in an ornate chair that dwarfs the Nephilim and the giants of old. You are on the throne of Shiva. Work quickly, Leather. No words, thoughts only. Ask the question. Beautiful points of light approach me, my Domina. It's as if the color prism has come to life. You should hurry, Leather. Time is not on your side. Ask the question that is in your mind. I don't... No... Wait, is, is this true? You didn't send her to the eternal rest? Stay on task, dear. It's the only way you're going to survive. The lights, they're getting closer. The question, ask the question. Oh my. The answer, Leather. I, is it possible? Wait, yes, it, it is true. How is it possible? The lights, my Domina, they, they aren't lights. The unthinkable, the impossible happened. What to do? Hmm. How can I turn this to my advantage? They aren't lights. They're they're fairies. Domina, they're angry. They're wielding fiery swords. They're circling my head. Lilith, please. I've done what you asked. The fairies are landing on me. (laughs) It sort of tickles. Wait... And one of them is trying to speak to me. Oh no, they have teeth! Yes, they do. And they aren't fairies. They are the demon Vora. Demon eaters. But you said you would forgive me! I said, if you survived. They're biting me, tearing at my flesh! Yes, that's all part of the eating process. No! I'm sorry, I'll do whatever you want. Just don't let the them... The thing about the demon Vora, dear is that they are tiny. It will take them decades to consume you, and you'll be alive through the entire process. Doesn't that just give you a tingle? I know, I felt a little tingle. Goodbye, Leather. Please! Oh, it hurts! They're like razor blades! No! No, not there! Then, in 1917, the boilers blew. Because the road up the mountain was so icy, all the fire department folks from town could do is watch the flames against the dark sky and bright moon. Even with half the Overbrook on fire, 57 patients still froze to death that night. Another four died in the fire along with two staff members. But the state rebuilt, upgraded the boilers, and the place was here until they closed it for good in 1986. Why do you know so much about this place? I've always been fascinated by it. The stories, the lives. That's one way to spin it. I think this is a very sad place. People were abandoned here, often by their loved ones. What a horrible life of loneliness that must have been. Except for the ones who deserved it. No one deserves to die scared and alone in a place they don't understand. Don't forget that part of this place was for the criminally insane. 
there were men in this place who did things to women and children that would make Jigsaw from Saw look like Spongebob. Why don't you tell Strange and Mary Poppins about that, Jacob? Tell me about the mines. Not much to tell. They run perpendicular to the Overbrook. The mines are the reason the Overbrook is here. How is that? The Mason family owned the mines for years. They used to dig for minerals, crystals, I believe. It was pretty good until a miner hit a gas pocket and set the mines on fire. They estimate the pocket was huge and will probably burn into the next century. It's deep enough that, other than the occasional hot spot, the surface is safe to build on. But no one would. So the town of Harvest Moon bought the land from the Masons and leased it to the state. This was in the late 1800s. The state built the Overbrook Sanitarium and Asylum a couple of years later. The location was perfect. Miles from town, a single access road that was easy to control, and a high mountain climate that doctors believed would be soothing to patients. And if the mines did explode, it would just be big Twinkies instead of normal people. Not a big loss. Hey, ask Jacob about his grandfather, Strange. Why must you be such an ass, Danny? Why must you be such an ass, Danny? Why must you be such a soft touch, Kelsey? You've always tried to save the strays. Someone's cat have a dozen kittens? Call Kelsey. She'll take care of them. Who was the first one to volunteer to help out at the homeless shelter? Oh, Kelsey will give up her weekend to help the bums. Little Jacob doesn't have any friends. Kelsey will take care of him. What are you trying to prove, Kelsey? Your dad left your mom because she was boffing the P.E. teacher. You're not going to get him back by doing good deeds. You take that back. Whoa, tiger girl. Back up. Come here, Daniel. Don't. Touch me, Strange. Who the hell are you anyway? You and that British bird have had us wandering around down here for hours. You're as lost as we are. I don't know what's gotten into you, kid, but you really don't want to throw down with me. You'd like that, wouldn't you? A chance to fondle a teenage boy? Danny, what is wrong with you? Mr. Strange and Elizabeth have been nothing but nice to us. Have they? It seems like all they've done is gotten us deeper into this place. Strange is wearing a raincoat. <laughs> Anybody else smell pedo bear? And what about Billy Piper? She doesn't say a lot, but does anyone else sense something a little off about her? I've had it! I'm breaking the fellowship. Get out! Go back, find your own way home. You're not welcome here. Don't think I won't. Then why are you still here? Fine. I'll laugh and have another drink when they show your bodies on the news in a couple of years. Danny, no, you don't know. Don't touch me, Kelsey. You stay here with your codependent party of three. Are you really going to let him go? Do you see me trying to stop him? He is a child. He's at least 18. Old enough to know better. He is someone's child. Are you sure? Mr. Strange, please. This has been a stressful couple of days for us. When did you come down here? Um, Wednesday, I think. You have been down here almost a week. It's Tuesday. I need to sit, to rest. Please bring Danny back, Mr. Strange. I'll help you find him. Really? Why? He's my friend. He normally doesn't act like this. No one stays behind. This place keeps changing its architecture, and it's unlikely I'd be able to find Daniel and then get back to you. Agreed. Kelsey and I will follow at our own pace. Thank you, Mr. Strange. Whatever. This is why I hate having partners or kids with me. I don't need those D-bags. I can find my way out of here just fine. Strange and Shaw. What a couple of ass clowns. Like they know what they're doing. I'm looking for a little girl. I bet you are, you perv. <laughs> Come here, Kelsey. Let me feel your soft, supple skin. And Kelsey falls for it. Well, why wouldn't she? Kels has always been a soft touch. Dumbass. I don't know what I saw in her anyway. Well, yeah I do. Best thing is, some flowers, donation to a worthy cause, and all will be forgiven. She'll be wearing that little white tank top for me before you can say toys for tots. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Hey! You there! Oh, what did Strange say that girl's name was? Angie, uh, Allie, uh, 
any? Hey, kid, wait! Hey, sheesh, don't run! I know the guy looking for you. Aw, oh, great. The kid ran inside that room. Kid, you in here? Wish there was some light so I could see. Hey, little girl, come here. I won't hurt you. <laughs> what the hell? You're not a little girl. You're a troll or something. <laughs> hey, get off of me. No, get away. Stop. How could he have gotten this far in such a short amount of time? Do you think the floor has changed again? No. I've been marking the walls with a piece of chalk. So far, we've been tracking back the way we came. Help me! Did you hear that? Yeah. Which way did it come from? I think it came from over here. Help me! That's Danny. You and Jacob go. We'll catch up. Elizabeth, I don't think that's a good idea. We will never let you out of our sights. Come on! This way! Jacob and I took off in the direction of Danny's voice. I kept looking back, making sure Elizabeth and Kelsey didn't fall too far behind. I found the girl, Strange. She's down here. This kid was fast. Danny turned a corner and ran through a set of swinging double doors. I looked behind and saw Jacob, and further behind, Elizabeth and Kelsey. I burst through the swinging doors. The hallway ended in a T. Left or right? Which way did he go? A metal door to my right squeaked close. The sign on the door said exam room three. I drew my gun and stepped inside. The room was as dark as a tomb. My pen light put a small spot on the medical examination table in the middle of the floor. Its padding had long ago been eaten away by moths or whatever else dwelled down here in the darkness. The front of the table, the part where the patient's legs would dangle, had some type of brown stain running down to the floor. A lamp stood behind the table. I turned to look to the right side of the room and saw the pipe coming at my head a second too late. <coughs> I deflected most of the blow with my arm, but Danny managed to knock the gun out of my hand. I swung at him with the flashlight. He pulled back and I followed, grabbing the arm holding the pipe and smashing into the mirror behind him. I pulled him off the wall and drove him towards the back. My flashlight was rolling useless on the ground. We hit the opposite wall and I grabbed his throat. You're choking me! And as soon as you pass out, Daniel, I'll stop choking you. Mr. Strange, what are you doing? Let him go! Help me, Jacob! Strange is trying to kill me! Hit him with the pipe! Over there! Don't listen to him! <laughs> Jacob rung my bell good. I was on one knee and fighting to remain conscious. Are you okay, Danny? What the hell happened? I don't know. He just went nuts. Look out! Jacob turned to look at me and Danny picked up a shard of glass, slicing a jagged line across Jacob's throat. Jacob's hands went to his neck. It looked as if he were trying to stop the blood. He fell a second. Why, Daniel? He annoyed me. Now, what to do with you? Harry, where are you? Don't call them. I'll kill them both if they step in this room. I was still seeing two of Danny, but I couldn't let on. You're not really Danny, are you? You're the verger wearing a Danny suit. Well, give that man a cigar. And you were the champion of angels, wearing a Harry Strange suit. No, I'm just the champion of little Annie Hyde. Know her? One of my thralls? What would interest a champion in one little girl? I slowly worked myself to my feet. My gun lay between Danny and I, closer to the wall. It would be a foot race. Unfortunately for me, I was still seeing double and was as coordinated as a drunken man. Damn that Jacob had a powerful swing on him. Harry! Damn it! Where are you? I could tell you the whole every human life is precious speech, but I'm not really feeling it right now. Tell you what, give me the girl and I'll be on my way. <laughs> no! I will not give up one of my thralls. I left an Alps in exchange. A fair trade for all. Alps? I wouldn't give that ugly rag doll to a dog as a chew toy. I just want one little girl. <coughs> no. The thrall must work. Mine the crystals. Get my magic. You must have hundreds of thralls down there. <coughs> Tens of hundreds. <coughs>
Problem? The two Dannys were slowly becoming one. <coughs> this meat suit is not suitable to my awareness. The women are much stronger. Better insulated. Still, a good day. I have a champion of the angels trapped, and two more thralls to put to work. <coughs> I don't think so. You're not going to last much longer in there. <coughs> you are right. So, I'll leave you with a little gift. <coughs> Danny bent over, holding his stomach. I moved slowly toward my gun. Help me, Mr. Strange. I feel sick. Like I'm going to... Danny bent backwards and threw his arms behind him. His stomach ripped open and his intestines flew towards me, grabbing my throat in a windpipe crushing grip. I put one hand on my pocket and grabbed my dagger of Yago. Harry! Good lord! Oh my god! Danny grabbed Kelsey's throat with one hand and began to choke her. Elizabeth threw a gun. Shoot him, Elizabeth! He keeps thrashing you and the girl about. I can't get a clean shot. Every time Elizabeth got near Kelsey, Danny pulled her away and tried to grab Elizabeth with his free hand. My vision was starting to fade. I plunged the dagger upwards and into a chunk of viscera closest to my throat. Intestinal fluid smelling as ripe as raw sewage on a sweltering summer day ran all over my arms and jacket. I kept cutting upward until I was able to sever the entrails choking me from the rest of Danny's body. The pressure on my throat disappeared like smoke in the wind. Elizabeth was using both of her hands to hold one of Danny's arms down. I grabbed the hand on Kelsey's throat and started to pull. It wouldn't budge. Elizabeth, give me your gun! I put the gun up against his wrist and pulled the trigger. I kicked Danny away, his one remaining hand reaching out and grasping. I tried to pull the rest of his hand away from Kelsey's throat, but his fingers held tight. Her face was blue and her eyes were closed. I pried each finger open and ripped it from her throat. Kelsey collapsed to the floor, her hair floating in a mixture of Jacob's blood and Danny's entrails. No! I picked up Kelsey, kicked in the door and ran into the hallway. What was left of Danny's body continued to twitch. What are you doing? She's not dying. Harry, I don't think... She's not dying! Her heart is too good. I laid Kelsey down on the floor. Her face was still blue and she wasn't breathing. I started CPR. Breathe! God damn it, breathe! Careful. You're going to break her sternum. I said breathe! Harry, love, I don't think... Shut up! She's not dying. It's done, Harry. I looked down at Kelsey. There wasn't anything left in there. Elizabeth put her arm on my shoulders and led me away from Kelsey's body. I shook her off and went back into exam room three. Danny's body was still twitching. Harry Strange, episode 303, The Overbrook, part one, was written by Tony Serechia and directed by Jason Tyler. All material is copyright by Tony Serechia and used with his permission. Featured in tonight's cast were Kellen Stennett, Emma Green, Haley Fuchsia, Joe Roche, Billy Flynn, Emily Jane, Parissa Johnston, and Trisha Groves. To keep up with the latest news and information on everyone's favorite private investigator, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash harrystrangeradio. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions to producer at harrystrange.com. For comments that may be included on future shows, call the listener hotline at 678-379-8669. That's 678-379-TONY. Harry's opening and closing theme music was written and performed by Ryan Lassard and is copyrighted by Ryan Lassard and used with his permission. Contact Ryan at rlassardmusic at gmail.com. Incidental music was written and performed by Kevin McLeod and is copyrighted by Kevin McLeod and used with his permission. Visit incompetech.com for more of Kevin's music. Sound effects provided by license with soundsnap.com. For the Harry Strange Radio Drama, I am Joanne Pruden. Good night. <laughs>